Hello everyone, welcome back to class. Today's lesson is trouble. We're gonna find out which, what trouble Charlie and Red get into today. Um, if you have your Bibles, awesome. If you don't, you can go get them real quick, but I will also have the verses up on the screen for you. So we, uh, before we get started, I wanna say hi to two families today. I would like to say hi to Daviana, David, Isabella, and Sophie, hello. I know uh, Davian and David, you guys are teeny in the teen class now, but hopefully you guys are watching. And also Emily Santana and Layla, hello. I know I always see them outside playing, so because they are across the street to the left of us. There are neighbors across the street. So it's always nice to see you guys outside and playing. So I hope you guys are enjoying the lessons. I hope you're sharing it with others and uh, hopefully other kids will be interested in watching them. And then hopefully when this is all done, we can get back to going to church and being in our classroom. And then you guys can say, hey, remember those videos you guys watched uh, that I invited you to watch? You remember you liked them? Come to class, okay? And get the real life lesson, okay? Um, so we are on lesson four today. Um, on Sunday will be lesson five, and that will be the last lesson of Missionary to Slocum Alley. Okay, so that Sunday will be the last lesson of this. And then on Wednesday, next Wednesday, I will do a, a different lesson. It's not going to be a Sunday School Charlie. But then that next Sunday, then I'll start the new one, which will be the Mystery of the Golden Key. Okay, so... Hopefully you guys are enjoying these. If not, I'm sorry, but just tough it out, right? <laughs> you guys will make it through. So, okay, so let's get started on our lesson. I'll be on the screen, but I'll just be in the corner. Okay, so today's lesson is trouble. Let's see what trouble Charlie and Red get into. But let's let's first review. No, don't exit. Okay, let's review what they went through. So uh, last week we learned about how um, people, uh, different people who hear God's word and how they take it in. So this young lady on this side of the screen, she's sitting down closing ears. She doesn't want to hear God's word. Those are people like who fall by the wayside, how the Lord Jesus said in the parable of the sower. Uh, they hear God's word and they're like, no, thank you. La, 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 la. I can't hear you. So then there's people over here on this side, right here. This young lady, she looks like she's thinking. First, they think, yeah, it does sound pretty good. Yeah, I, I think I would like to, but not right now. Just I want to wait when things are a little different, when I'm ready. So can't be like that either. Those are the people who fall on the stony ground. And then this young man down here in the bottom left corner, he's jamming. He's running. There's people, uh, the seed that gets thrown amongst the thorns. Those are the people who are like, nope, I don't want anything to do with it. I, nothing. No way, Jose. So they completely refuse God's word. And then there's people like this young man on the right side. Like this young man, he is like the seed that fell on the good ground. He uh, receives it and he brings forth much fruit. So that leads us up to this young man. This young man's name was Chip and he was a young boy that Pastor Jenkins had come across that he uh, was out begging for shoes. He was in not so good of a condition. He, um, his family was, in, was going through a rough patch and that Pastor Jenkins had witnessed to him and Chip, he had never heard about the Lord Jesus. He thought it was a bad word. And um, he had accepted the Lord Jesus into his heart that night. So after the services, Charlie was talking to Mr. Randall and remember um, the boy on Slocum Valley, his name was Red and he had red hair. His name's Red, he had red hair. And Mr. Ra um, Mr. Randall, the missionary, he also had red hair. So every time Charlie saw Mr. Randall, it reminded him of red. So he went up to him and said, hey, Mr. Randall, um, did you ever go around breaking fishing rods? And Mr. Randall was like looking at him confused, like, what are you talking about? He's like, but no, I didn't, but I can think of a, a young boy who did. And so he shared his experience, how another boy took his baseball bat and hit it against a tree and broke it. And Charlie's like, well, what did you do? How do you, how did you handle it? Well, Mr. Randall said he hit him. He hit him back. And Charlie's like, what? Like, 
he was so surprised. Well, yeah, of course, he. I'd be surprised too. Hearing the missionary uh, hit someone, yeah, that um, doesn't sound very good. But he says he, when he was this happened when he was a kid, and he says, well, I shouldn't have done that. I should have. Uh, I should have invited him to church. I should have invited him to Sunday school. That's the best way to. I. Uh, as you, I guess you could say, getting even with someone who's just me, downright mean, just, you know, invite them to church. They need Jesus too. So that's what Charlie did. He was on a mission. Okay. He went to Slocum Valley. He found Red and Red, he's like, don't, are you asking about your dad's fishing rod? It's not my fault. It's all your faults. Don't be asking. Well, he saw Charlie's bike and he liked it. And he says, let me ride it. And Charlie's like, oh, I don't know. Well, then he says, okay, you can write it, but you have to do one thing. And Red's like, okay, what? He says, you have to go to Sunday school with me. And he's like, what? And he jumps back and he's like, uh, no way. I'm not a heathen. And then he jammed and he went inside the house. So Charlie was just like, what do I do? How do I handle this? How do I witness to this redheaded boy on Slocum Alley? What do I do? So that leaves us where we are today. Oops, there you go. So, today's lesson. It is called trouble. And <laughs> it's a lot of trouble. I want to say this is my favorite lesson, but I think they're all my favorite lesson. All these Sunday school Charlies are my favorite. So, today's lesson is called trouble. When the missionary conference started, Charlie was there, sitting right there in the front row. Each night, there was an exciting meeting. Missionaries from Africa, India, Japan, and other countries talked about their work and showed many strange curios. A skin from a black and white, long-haired, uh, um, I think I'm saying this right, Garaza monkey, a cannibal's fork. Do you know what a cannibal is? A cannibal is a person who eats another person. That's very, very wicked. A string of ivory beads carved from elf, uh, from an elephant's tusks. You know, those el the elephants have the big like, horns. That's what that was made of. And also a mask of a medicine man that a medicine man would wear. Looks kind of scary. On some of the nights, the missionaries dressed in native costumes. They told exciting stories of God's protection and deliverance. One told of a demon worship in the jungles of Africa and witch doctors who kept people in constant fear. A missionary from Brazil described the strange ceremony of demon worship in South America. I was called, it was, not I was called, oops, no, it was called the Macumba. The people who took it, uh, who took part in it, danced for many long hours. A missionary from India told about the starving millions who are dying without any hope. He described the worship of the sacred cows. See the cows? Come on. There they are. Okay. Many of the people believed in, that their ancestors came back in the forms of these cows. A missionary from America told of his work with the American Sunday School Union. He had traveled from place to place starting Sunday schools and reaching unchurched families for Christ. On the last night of the conference, a missionary from India spoke. There are more than two billion people in the world, he said. How can they be reached with the gospel? He held up the scripture. <laughs> scripture. He held up uh, held up a picture of praying hands, and there they are. We must never cease to pray, he said. This is something that every Christian can do to start help spreading the gospel. Once there was a missionary whose name was John Hyde. When he went to India, he became so burdened for the people of the land that he spent many nights without sleep so he could pray. Many times during the day of long, tiring work, he went without meals so he could have more time to talk with God. Here, let me show you him. There he is. Uh, so he can talk with God. God answered his prayer and sent a revival. Many, many people believed on the Lord Jesus because of his prayers. 
In 1908, Praying Hyde, as he was often called, continued to pray. He asked God to give him at least one soul every day for a whole year. So that would be 365 people, souls. Again, God answered and more than 400 natives came to Christ. So he asked for one soul, one person to get saved a day. And God definitely provided. He went above that. He went, he gave him 400. The next year he prayed for two souls a day and more than 800 people received Christ. But God wants more than just our prayers. He wants our gifts. Now, what can we give to God? There are five wonderful, wonderful things that you can present to the Lord to help spread the gospel message. So the first thing is he wants your heart. There's your heart. Now, this doesn't mean like a valentine or the part of your body that pumps blood to the rest of you. God says in Proverbs 23, 26, My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes, eyes observe my ways. He wants the part of you, the, the heart is the part of you that thinks. Okay, it's like your mind. So, uh, it's the part of you that makes the decisions. It's God wants your life. The second thing is your body. He wants your body. Now, um, God needs your lips to talk for him. He needs your hands to work for him. He needs your feet to travel for him. He needs your eyes to see the needs of others without Christ. And 1 Corinthians 12, 27 says, Now we are the body of Christ and members in particular. We all, as Christians, everyone is part of the body of Christ. The third thing is your time. He wants your time. And now we have plenty of it <laughs> since we are at home. So he wants your time. Now, now that you're home, it's very easy to get distracted and use that time for other things. Uh, like, say, playing in the front yard or, in my case, gardening or um, watching TV. We can get distracted and fill our lives with those things when we should be filling it with the Lord Jesus. So he wants our time. It takes time to tell others about Christ. How will others hear about Christ's way of life if you do not do not take the time to tell them? And um, let's see. This verse, Leviticus 27, 32, this goes well with your time and then also our next one. So, and concerning the time of the, of the herd or of the flock, even of whatsoever passeth under the rod, the tent shall be holy unto the Lord. So he wants our possessions. So your time and your possessions, you can, uh, you need to set that time and your possessions aside for the Lord. So he wants our possessions, our our wealth as well. God expects at least one tenth of our money, our time, of, of everything. Because how else did you get that? The Lord. The Lord provided for it. We can at least give him the tenth. He's letting you have 90 of it, okay? He's letting you have 90% of it. He just wants the tenth of it. So one day in Korea, after the war, an old man and his small son trudged wearily Harnessed to a plow, and there they are. They were preparing a small field in which they could plant some grain. A stranger stopped and asked them why they didn't use an ox to plow the field. That looks like hard work. Like, I've been working in the garden and using, like, a shovel and, and rakes and a, a gardening hoe, and that's a lot of work. So that looks, like, ten times harder. So that looks rough. Um... They were plowing the field uh, without an ox, without any kind of animal. Um, so the stranger asked them, why aren't you using an animal? And they smiled kindly and they said, we are Christians. During the war, our small chapel was destroyed. Now our hearts were sad, but we knew it could be rebuilt. So all the Christians began to give money. Each one gave what he could. My son and I had lost our home and our family in the war. There was nothing left. Besides this faithful old ox that did the plowing for us. So we knew God deserved the best that we could give. And that was the best we had. 
So we sold the ox and we put the money toward the build, rebuilding of the church and the work of God. God wants the very best that you can give him. And the, the fifth thing is your love. God wants your love. This is perhaps the most important part that you can give him. We can give him all these other things. You can give him your heart, you, um, or like your, your thoughts. You can give him your body. You can give him your time. You can give him your wealth. But if he doesn't have your, your love, unless we love him dearly, we cannot really serve the Lord. It's only when we love him with all our heart that we will gladly give him our bodies, our time, and our money. And Deuteron <laughs> Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. It's like the song we sing. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. When our lives are completely given to the Lord, we will find that our lights begin to shine brightly. And all the all around the world, the radiance begins to be seen and felt. You can shine for the children. Oops. So, oh, I'm sorry. Matthew 5, uh, verses 14 through 16, it says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on, the, on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that, ye, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So that song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That's, that's where we got the, that song from. It's from the, these, the scripture. Um, so you can shine for the children in Africa, in Asia, in India, and South America, and America. Now the missionary conference was over, and, the, and that night, Charlie lay in his bed. He asked himself, what have I given to the Lord? I've been selfish with my possessions. I didn't even want Red to ride my bicycle. Then he closed his eyes and he said, dear God, he prayed, Help me to give my best to win red for thee. Amen. Now, the following morning, Charlie opened his bank and counted his money. He had exactly $2.13. He stuck it in his pocket and hurried out the door. He, uh, soon he was on his way to Slogam Alley. The money jingled in his pocket and seemed to be saying, Missionary money, missionary money, missionary money, missionary money. I wish I had my change with me, but I don't have any change. Hold on. Hold on. I think I have change. Hang on. Okay. Let's try that again. So, I'll just, he doesn't have a tin can as a pocket, huh? I have change here. Ooh, dirty money. Okay. There you go. That's better. Okay. So, let's see. Let's start that part over again. The money jingled in his pocket and seemed to say, missionary money, missionary money, missionary money. I'm feeling it all over the place. When he reached Red's house, Charlie got off his bike and he walked rather fearfully up to the door. He knocked lightly and he stepped back. His heart was beating wildly. And at that moment, he expected the door to just burst open and Red come hollering at him. But then the door opened and a thin, tired looking woman answered the door. What do you want? She asked. Is Red in? Charlie asked. A little girl with bright red hair peeked around her mother's faded skirt. No, he isn't, the woman said. He, he left about an hour ago. You could probably find him down at the river. Charlie returned to his bicycle. There he is. Now the money in his pocket began to say, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. When he reached the river, he looked around for Red. Remember that spot where, where uh, they had their little tug of war with the fishing rod. Uh, he checked the bridge 
and then the place where the fishing rod had broken, but Red was nowhere to be seen. Charlie was ready to go back home or headed back to town when he heard a loud <laughs> a splash. And then a sudden cry for help, help, help. Charlie hurried along the river until he reached the bend. Remember the bend? That's where his, Charlie's dad said, don't go near the bend because we found out that someone had drowned there. So he finally reached the bend and Red Sanders was splashing wildly in the water. Help, help, Red hollered, I can't swim. He tried desperately to grasp the clump of bushes on the muddy banks, which rose about two feet above him. Charlie looked around for help. He searched quickly in the nearby bush for a long tree branch, but he didn't find anything. There was only one thing for him to do. He dropped to his stomach, then he clenched clutched. He clutched a thin small shrub near the edge of the bank and he let himself over the edge into the water. Grab my feet! He shouted. Hurry! Charlie heard red splashing and coughing behind him. He felt sharp fingernails digging deeply into his ankles. Hang on, Red! Hang on! He shouted as he tried to pull himself back up to the bank. The thin shrub bent beneath his weight. It was hot. His hands were sweaty. Then he felt his fingers slipping. He tried to dig his fingernails into the bark, but the weight of Red's body was just too much. He closed his eyes and he screamed for help. Dear God, please send someone to help us. And as he placed his face against the muddy earth, he felt his fingers slipping and slipping and slipping. And this is where we will leave Charlie and Red until our next lesson. So come back for lesson five to hear what happens to Charlie and Red. Dun, dun, dun. So exciting. So, left you on a cliffhanger or a muddy bank cliff. Let's see. Let me make me bigger. Okay, so I'm sure you guys are like, what happened? Okay, I know what happens, and I'm still kind of like, oh my goodness. So, Charlie knew that God wanted his best, and he knows now that it costs to be a missionary. But is he willing to risk his life for Red Sanders? And it looks like he is. So how about you? What have you given to God? So ask yourselves. Um, let me put it up here. Ask yourselves. Think, what are you what have you given to God is there anything that you can give to the Lord if you don't have any uh, if you don't have the Lord Jesus in your heart it doesn't matter if you give him your money your time if you don't have you don't love the Lord Jesus and accept him into your heart and live for him you be it, there's no point there's no point if you don't if you don't love the Lord there's no point in doing all the other things like the the missionaries had said you can give him your time your wealth your uh, your work but if you don't have Jesus in your heart if you don't have love for him it's all for naught so I hope you enjoyed the lesson I did um, I was trying not to yell so loud but hopefully you got the full effect and come back next week to find out what happens for a grand Okay, so this was the last lesson, uh, not the last, this is the second, this was the fourth lesson. The next one, you will find out what happens, and then we'll do a regular lesson, and then after that, I'll start the new Sunday School Charlie. So, I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Um, it was fun. And I hope you learned something. I hope you learned from this lesson. I hope you learn uh, to be a missionary yourselves and learn we need to take time and our money and our, our um, gifts and give them to the Lord. He deserves our best. We need to give our best. So ask yourselves, what have I given to God? And test yourself, push yourself, do more for the Lord. And I know you're probably thinking, well, that's kind of hard to do because I'm stuck at home. Well, invite your family to watch church services. That's, I mean, that's pretty easy to do. I just, I just send them a link to this and say, come join us for, for services. I need to be better about uh, posting it to my Facebook so more friends and family can see. So uh, I miss you guys, and I hope you guys are enjoying your time at home, even though you guys are 
stuck at home, but enjoy it, okay? So I will see you on the next lesson, okay? Bye, guys.